This is Real Life with Deb Waterbury, a real show for real people with real issues. And now, here's your host, Dr. Deb Waterbury. Welcome to this episode of Real Life with Deb Waterbury. We are in our relationship series as we have been for the last couple of weeks and we've kind of gone through some, uh, some things to do with marriage and whatever and I thought it was really interesting and so viable that we talk a little bit to somebody who knows something about an issue that's really become much more prevalent, I think, um, yeah. at the, old, the more years that go on. I mean, maybe, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago, this might not have been necessarily a topic not as big that a topic, was so yeah. viable. But we're going to talk about blended families today. And I know so many of you and so many of my friends and so many people have the issue of making it work whenever you blend two families together, which is really the definition, I think, of blended families. You're blending this family with this family and right. then bringing it together. So I have with me Kristen Tenniswood. Hey, Kristen. Hi. So Kristen's on my board of directors for my nonprofit here, um, Love Everlasting Ministries. We do the Reap What You Sow School for Women, and we also are endeavoring on Project Melinda, which is a bigger trade school, and Kristen mm -hmm. serves on that board of directors for those. And she also has is married to a man. When you got married to Paul, he had how many kids? Three Two kids. Two. So um, she had entered this blended family situation. And so I thought she was the, kind of one of those people that'd be best to talk about this. So thank you for being on the show. So, you know, I, I think that, Kristen, I mean, I'm, you and I have been friends for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I knew you before you married Paul. Mm -hmm. I knew you while right. y'all were dating and then right afterwards. And it's been, you've had some ups and downs almost since the beginning, haven't you? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of it's, and most of it had to do with the blended family issue, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I wanted to have Kristen talk to some of that. Now, before we get into that, I want to give you a couple of scriptures that the Lord kind of led me to. And even thinking about this issue, because it, and we wanted to put this in the relationship series because this is about relationship right. with you and your husband, with you and the children. And, you know, right. some of you have where you have children and you blended with either someone with no children or more children together. And yeah. um, that's that the relationships between everybody kind of can be the make or break, don't you right. think? I mean, speak yeah. to that for a second. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's difficult because everybody has their own relationship. They Very have, good, they that's have a good point. Their own um, personality. Yes. So when you're blending in that kind of an environment, it's difficult. It because, is. you know, I mean, your husband's yours, the kids, mm. man versus woman. Yeah, you and know. you know, what a good point too, in terms of there was, there is a relationship between this father and their, his children. Right. And then you add this other person. And, and so you're dealing with relationships that are already established. Right, exactly. And then you're trying yep. to add a new dimension to that. Right. That's very hard. Yes, it is. It's very hard. Yeah. And, you're, <laughs> and, and also touching on that whole man woman thing. That's, yeah. I mean, that's an issue all together all by itself. It <laughs> is. It really, truly really is. And it's tough. I mean, um, it's the parenting side of it. But when you go into it, I think, the biggest obstacle really is it can be disciplining, mm. but it can also be um, not being so hard on yourself. That yes. was the, my biggest obstacle. It was, and that was what I talked to you most yeah. often about. Cut yourself some slack. Yeah. And you just, and I think I said that to you, I don't know how many times. Just <laughs> cut yourself some slack. In but, every area of my life. Yes, it's crazy. yes. But I can imagine, though, that you, especially if you enter a family that's already established, right. you don't necessarily want, and if you have a family that's entering this, right. A, you don't want to ruin what's already established, and B, you don't want that ruining what you have established. Absolutely, because you have your values. Right. And right. They have their values, right, right, and you have to bring that together under what God says, yes, and what the Bible says to be true. Whew. That's <laughs> so a challenge. That is I mean, that's a challenge if you're just starting from scratch. Yeah, when you're starting, because you're dealing with a whole lot of different things. So I thought because yeah. this really is tricky, and it is about human nature and right. about relationship. I think that's why the Lord sent me to these couple of scriptures. So I just want to share these first, and then I'm going to mostly let Kristen speak to some of these questions that came up in my mind about what the challenges were and, and, the, and the blessings in right. having a blended family. Absolutely. So the first scripture he told, took me to is Proverbs 10, 12. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Mm, that was a good one. Yeah, <laughs> and, I'm, and I think that in any situation that's the truth, but in a blended family that, I mean, you've got to love beyond all the faults, all the friction that's about to occur because right. it is going to be so much friction. Yeah, it's true. For a long time. Yeah, How long have you, you and Paul been married now? Well, we've been married almost 10 years. March 28th will be 10 years. Okay. But um, they say, 
I don't know if statistics have changed, but they said five to seven years it generally takes for a blended family I to come together. I think that's what I've heard as well, yeah. But I can't remember if it's changed from seven to ten. I'm not really sure. But anyway, so it's... It's you know, hard. It's wild. I I'm, know. I looked back on it and I was like, it's almost ten years. And, and I've I, seen the progression and the growth, but it takes a while. It and I'm not sure overnight. there are times you look back and go, how did I do that? Oh, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> How in the world did I do that? I know. And that's probably true of so many things oh, that we yes. go through, but I know that you've thought that. The so other scripture true. I saw uh, the Lord brought me was Proverbs 15, verse 1. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Now, mm. that, I mean, that's true of your children and your husband, all relationships, and I think all of these do. Everything. But I can only imagine that, especially if you're entering a blended family where the children are older, and I think yours, the, they were. They Paul's, were, yeah. So they were already like teenager age, right? Right, right Oh right. my goodness. Yeah. I mean, that's bad enough if they're yours. Yeah, I know. Entering that teenage when you're the new mama, oh my goodness, I don't know how you did that. Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. I do remember, yeah. I do remember talking to you through it. Lots of prayer. Yes, lots and lots of prayer. Lots and but lots you know, of I think that scriptures like this where you remember to love, to be sweet, right. to not return anger for anger or, or, um, or um, you know, things that people do against you. Right. And because and, kids in particular, they can be mean. Yeah, it's true. And they can be mean without really, because they haven't had the experience yet to, right. to stifle their words or to soften them or to have a filter of some kind. Well, and a lot of it depends too on what parent was missing in their life of too. Course, so, right. I mean, you know, if it was the mother and there's a daughter involved, mm -hmm. you know, she's going to have those trust issues. She's going to have course. that, you know, get away from my father. You know, he's the only one that I've had for so long. Right. I trust him and I don't want to lose him. Right. You know? And so you have that dynamic and you have to be careful with that, which yes. that verse really comes into play. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word, sorry, a harsh stirs word up stirs up, yeah, strife and anger. Mm -hmm. It's so important. It because, is, especially the teenage girl. Yeah. Because there had to be some harsh words. Right. And they're her working mouth. through, yes. this parent's not here, they don't yes. love me, why did they not choose me? Right. All of those things. And if, you know, for me, I came from a broken home like that similar. Mm -hmm, so it mm -hmm. was easier for me, you know, God used that to be able to kind of step in and say, you know, you know where you right. had hurts, you know where. Oh, that's good. And so it's, you know, it, it really is a bigger dynamic than you think it is. You know, Kristen, so I'm going to stop here for a second just because I want you to speak to that a little bit because um, okay. it's such a good point. There, are, There is a time in every relationship, in any discord amongst people right. where we have to step outside of our own hurt and put ourselves in their shoes and try to understand from the point at which they're coming. Right. Because if you do, then these kinds of scriptures are easier to follow. It's true. Yeah. But it's difficult whenever you've been attacked or you've had your feelings hurt to remember that most likely the words that are coming at you aren't about you at all. Absolutely. That is so good and that is so true. It's so funny too because I just took a grief class with Bobby Rill. I know yes. that you have had her yeah, she's gonna, on the she's show. Yeah, she's going to be on the show here soon again. Yeah, yes. and so she really talks about that mm. and how um, you have to be able to approach people because you don't know where they're at. Yes. And so when you realize where they're at and where they're coming from, it's mm -hmm. easier for you to see that hurt is not directed towards me. Yes, because as know? soon as we stop taking that stuff personally, right. then you can deal with people in love. Right. You know, and I think about that, just Jesus pops in my head. He had an, his entire people turn against him. Right, he did. And yet he knew it wasn't about him. Yeah. He knew it was about what he stood for and what he was bringing to the table Amen. and their fright and their fear and their uncertainty about what this man was telling them they needed to now believe uh, in, in addition to an, as opposed to. Right. And he understood it wasn't about him. Right, right. And I think that that's uh, such a, you know, when, you, when you said that just now about how you dealt in particular with your daughter right. and, and how to understand her own hurt especially about her own mama yeah. having left. Um, and so if you can put yourself in those positions, that's really good. The third scripture he gave me was Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. And again, it's really saying kind of the same things, which is when the Lord gives me scriptures for these messages or these uh, series, I kind of know where he wants to go in, right. in, the, in the show itself. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man or woman. Yeah. And, you know, seasoned with salt, 
we're talking about things that are helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Scripture. Yeah. Um, because if this, you know, it, you know, whether or not, and you know, I just wrote this book, We Are Mother Abraham. I know. And, and oh. so, so many, much of it is, it's not about just birthing children. Right. It's when you have children and you could have adopted them. They could be your stepchildren. They could be your nieces and nephews. Right. They could, any, every mother has within her the innate desire yeah. and capability of mothering. And we all mother in one aspect or another. Right. But understanding that what my job is and what your job is as a mother is to season everything we do with salt because it's ultimately to point them to Christ. Well, and I think that's where the blessing comes in mm -hmm. because, you know, when you've been together and you've, you know, you've fought those years of seven to 10 years or however long you right. know, you've been in that relationship with them, um, the blessing comes from the things that you have taught them and because they love you through the years they see they understand they know what you're trying to tell them yes very you good. know and that's such a good thing i know my son over christmas break he's he's got autism for you know a lot of people don't know but um he's so sweet and he looked at me and my aunt was down from north carolina and my mom we were oh, all going yeah. to we were going out to eat i can't remember where we're headed <clears throat> but he was so sweet and he said you know he said, my mom, she just really hasn't been here, but you know, Kristen's really been a mom to me and Aww. I just love her so much, you know? Aww. And it just, it's those moments Especially where- Especially coming from a young man who deals with autism. Right, That's those moments deal. when you're just like, you step back and, and you're just like, God, I know there's a purpose, there's a reason mm -hmm. you have used me, right. you know? But I've also been, you know, looking to you to be able to be used right. in these children's life. And that's a, that's a huge, 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 not red flag. I can't say the word, but it's just a huge thing. It's a huge, huge blessing of course, for me. Yeah, but it's a milestone, if I nothing else. I see it in his life. Yeah. You know, for a kid to really understand that, like you said, with autism. Yeah. It takes me back, and I'm just like, you know, it just. God is so good. He's so good. But you know, that's, as you said, you've been married 10 years. Right. So, so explain kind of at the very beginning, when you very first married Paul and you entered this situation, right. and he has a son with autism, and then his daughter, who's a teenager. What did you find to be your number one challenge? Um, I, I really think disciplining was the number one challenge yes, for me. I can imagine. Um, and I really, I feel that way because I have my own beliefs, right. but the kids are so used to his way of disciplining. Right. I really had to step back and let him do that for a couple of years so Very that good. they could get used to me. That's good. Um, that's but it was, wisdom. It was, that's not easy. I was going to say, it was very hard for me to implement. <laughs> Did not always do that correctly. But, but, but I knew that your goal. what you knew I had it. to do. Yeah. Right, exactly. And you were a huge instrument in that because you were the, one of the ones that told me that that's what I needed to do. Mm. And I had to step back and continue to ask God to help me to be able to do that. Right, It was right. very, very, very it's hard. It's hard to, whenever you know what you, and you know, the chance, and not that I'm saying that men don't discipline well. Right. But women, we are that emotional, you know, steering wheel within oh, yes. the house. We always are. And because we're the emotional steering wheel, we sometimes can measure out and understand the need and the method by which discipline ought to be implemented. Absolutely. Men often just either bring the hammer or don't bring anything to the table at all. It's like they don't have anything <laughs> in between. That seems to be the issue. So I can yes. imagine entering a situation like this where you know you have wisdom, right. but you're also entering a situation where you could do more harm than good if you implement your wisdom right off the bat. Right. That's hard. Right. And not just in the child's life, but also with your husband mm -hmm. because he doesn't want to f be felt like you're overstepping his boundaries right. or his head of householdism or whatever that is Very or whatever good. that looks like for whoever's family. Right, right. You have to be able to step back and say, you know, this may offend him or it may offend her. Right. And I've got to be careful the way that I say this. But at some point, you do have to step in there and say that. Of course. Because your ultimate goal is to God, not your husband. Right. Even though God has brought y'all together. Right. You still have to look to God ultimately because he's the one that you're going to answer to. Amen. So at some point, if God's telling you, I have to tell these kids this or I have to tell my husband this. Right. You have to be in prayer about how God's going to help you on how to say those and things. How to, and when to do it. And, and, how to, and you know, right. and uh, and you're bringing up such a great, great point here. The the 
that whole blended family, calling it a blended family, you know, when you're blending something, even in a blender or shaker cup or whatever, as soon as you put it in there, it is separated. Right. And you can start blending and it's not blended yet. <laughs> no. It's like, you know, the little thing starts turning around and it's still, you can still see all the separated pieces. Right. And they, matter of fact, for a while, it looks like grossness. I mean, if you ever make a, a smoothie, you can know as first as you start doing it, it looks terrible and you're thinking, I'll never do that. I'll never drink this. Mm. But it, that blending process takes time. It's a, it's a process to blend. You don't just get married and then are blended right. and you don't just do one or two things being a blended family doesn't mean okay I've married these people have children we've married now we're a blended family no no no. you get married and your two families living in the same house for quite a long time and you have to take that time to blend together and what you're saying is that all of everybody who's entering this whether you're entering it with your own children or not as in your case you're you have to come into this with they have their own stuff Right. And my stuff might be better than their stuff, might not be. But either way, right. I've got to approach this with submission to my father first off mm -hmm. and submission to the fact that they've got their own things and I need to take my time. And I love what you just said, that you waited, you know, maybe a year, two or three years before you really said this is, and you guys became a unit of parenting. Right. Because it really takes time. That is, and it, I think the biggest word here is patience, don't you think? It is, yeah. It's a lot, it takes a lot of patience. A with lot, yourself, patience. with them, with your husband or wife as right. you're coming into this. And the, and the key is, is Jesus. I mean, yes. you always pointed me to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the key truly is Jesus. Because if you don't have patience and you're not looking to God for that patience. Yes. And I know, you know, people always talk about praying for patience. Yes. But the thing is. <laughs> we, need it. we need it. We need it. Right. And in a situation like this, um, you're going to mess it up every time. Yes. We're human beings. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Going to Jesus or not, you're going to mess it up. You're right. Exactly. Because we're fleshly and we're going to follow that fleshly nature, which yep. tells us I'm right, you're wrong. Therefore, I need to tell you how right I am and how wrong oh, you are. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's, and you're going to do that sometimes, but you know, you, and we do that in regular, normal, you day know, to day. No, nobody brings anything in. We're just <laughs> having kids together. I still do that all the time. <laughs> you know, it's, it's difficult, but you're adding that added dimension of right. something already existing, either yeah. on your side or their side or both sides. Or both sides, right. Yeah, um, it's a, it, that cannot be easy. That has to be a difficult thing, but it cannot happen without Jesus. I don't see how blended families outside of the Lord are peaceful places. Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. how is a family a peaceful place without the Lord? But right. I mean, without Jesus blending something together like that, mm -hmm. that didn't begin together, it's you're grafting him on. And right. that's um, that's a hard thing to do without the peacemaker in your life. It's such a beautiful picture of what he does for us. Though. Amen, it, it is. really is. It I is. Mean, it just... Grafting us onto that branch was what he did Absolutely. for all of us. And this is Absolutely. what he's doing in those families. Right. And if you can keep your brain centered on that, I think that's helpful. Yeah. But I think the biggest piece of advice that I tend to give women who are entering into blended families or are in that is to, as you've already pointed out once before, is to try to separate yourself from whatever's happening here right. and recognize not to take it personally. This is not an attack on your ability to parent, your ability to be a spouse, your right. ability to do anything. This is so just, good. this is literally your, you people are trying to figure out how to live together and right. step back and don't take it personally. I was just talking this morning to a lady about that aspect of just relationship. If we can just figure out not to take everything so personally. Yeah. You it's know, and not, even so if somebody's cute. personally attacking you, it's most often not personal. It's They're not. dealing with something else. And you have to know that. But it's so often hard because yes. when you're dealing with 15 other relationships right. around you exactly. and you're trying to do it in all those. And your own relationship with right. yourself. <laughs> when you come against somebody that they disrespect you and you're like, whoa, wait a second. Yeah, that's it's a trigger, you know, isn't it? It's yeah, a especially trigger. when it's a kid because then yeah. you just want to just put them in their place. And that's the, it's difficult to not step into those. Right. Well, before we end, I want you to have an opportunity to look into the camera and tell women or men, whoever are watching right now, who are in blended families or who are entering them, what one piece of advice, if you could just give them one piece of advice, what would that be? Um, I think one piece of advice would be just always to turn to God, look mm. to God, be in prayer, Very always good. be in the word because without God, you're going to screw it up every time. Yes. And he's the only one that's going to bring you right back to where you need to be and yes. give you the, the tools of what you need to do yes. for that family, for your situation. Absolutely. That's um, great. He's our anchor in yeah. everything. 
and, and has been your anchor through all these 10 years. He really has. Ups and downs, ups and downs, and there are going to be ups and there are going to be downs. Yeah. Um, but he will always anchor you to him right there in the middle. That's the truth. Very yeah. good. Well, thank you, Kristen. You've given us so much wisdom. Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you have any comments or if you have anything you want to share, you're in a blended family, you've come to some knowledge or some wisdom that that you can share with those of us who need to hear more of it, then please comment below. We would love to hear that. If you have any questions, do the same thing. God bless you. We will see you next time. Thank you for joining me today on this episode of Real Life with Deb Waterbury. I hope it's been a blessing to you as much as it was to me. You know, if you want any of my books or information on articles or any of my speaking engagements, you can go to my website at debwaterbury.com. God bless you.